Shalom, shalom, Mr. Carr. Shalom, shalom. It's a pleasure being here again tonight, seeing everybody's beautiful faces, and uh, we're going to have another dynamic class, as always, tonight, trying to expound a little bit on um, these plagues and uh, what's happening in the book of Revelation a little bit more in detail. So that's going to be the topic of tonight's class. We just want to slow it down just a little bit. I want to make sure everybody is truly able to digest exactly what's going on because things are really beginning to heat up, and I just want everybody to um, know where we're at now in these latter days. Very important. So, uh, anybody have any testimonies uh, they'd like to share? Um, how the Father's been revealing things to them? Um, again, there's a whole lot going on, so prayfully everybody is um, getting a good understanding of my lesson and Moray's lesson, so we could be, again, we're going to talk about this preparation thing a lot um, tonight and on... Um, this coming Shabbat service. All right, so there's a lot that's going to be going on tonight and Saturday. All right, so make sure everybody um, is, is totally old. Very good. All right, so um, without further ado, then, what we'll do is that uh, we'll stand up face to east. We'll have our chief, Zakain, the Bar Yahu, is going to blow the shofar. Seven times, all right, representing the seven, the seven plagues, all right. <laughs> all right, so um, and then from there, we have um, Shalak to actually bring us in with um, with prayer, and then we just go through the normal routine with the new covenant, and um, Deborah Rain, is it Deborah? No, um, but Mid, yeah, but Midbar, no, Numbers, the uh, no, Exodus, Shemot. We'll go over that. All right, so let's get started. Out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no 
Father Elohim before me, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, thy sovereign, thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah thy Elohim in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it set apart. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah thy Elohim. In it thou shalt do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Shabbat day and made it set apart. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not forget thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not forget thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his manservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. All agreement? Yeah. Very good, very good. Okay, Mr. Kai. The title of today's class is called The Seven Vows and the Seven Plagues of the Father of Yehor. And um, what we're going to be doing is, when we look at the book of Revelation, it's actually the seven plagues. We have um, the seven vows, the seven trumpets, and the seven seals. Okay, so those three sevens are going to be real or very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to slow it down a little bit so that uh, we get a nice overstanding or understanding of exactly what's going on in these last days. Very quick, Mormon. Um, is this going to be part two? Yes, yeah. part two. Okay, cool, because I remember you had text me. Right, when right. This will be great. part two. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. So everybody's been seeing what's going on with the news with um, Pelosi and um, and all these guys here and Donald Trump and not allowing Donald Trump to, to make the, um, the the presidential address um, at the House. Mm -hmm. So he had to do it at, at at, at the White House, but he wasn't able to use the um, the, the House floor. Right. And so they're going back and forth with this whole thing here, and I just want to make sure everybody understands that, um, like the scripture tells us, a house divided against itself shall not stand. So there's a lot of things that's about to be happening. Um, make sure everybody's on board. As always, let's begin by giving all the esteem to the Father for his mercy, his love, his kindness, that he has shown his set-apart people. And that's going to be very important that we always remember that we are a set of part people. The nation of Yashra all. Okay, very important. So what we want to do first is to prove and show that we are a set of part people. And the way that we must conduct ourselves amongst one another, it must be in truth, in righteousness, and we must always behave like we're set apart. So if we can get Zabura, oh, you want to, oh, you can read it, uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Do mm -hmm. not? Yes, do not. Pay very, very close attention to what's going on here, um, 7 through 9, 6 through 9. For you are a set apart people unto Yahuwah. Yahuwah has cho chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And that's very important. So the Father chose us first above all people that's on the face of the earth, and we're supposed to be a set-apart people and a special people unto our husband, the groom, Yahusha HaMashiach. Verse 7. You would not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more than more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of 
of all people. But because Yahuwah loves you and because he would guard the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, as Yahuwah brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Mizraim. Know therefore that Yahuwah, he is the Elohim, the faithful uh, El, which guards his covenant and his mercy with them that love him and guard him his commandments to a thousand generations. Absolutely, hallelujah. So that is very important. So we're going to go with verse 8. Because the Father, Ab Yahuwah, loved you, each and every brother and sister here tonight, and all the congregation of Yasserol, and of all those that keep the covenant, but I want to home in with the congregation of Yasserol, because um, we want to make sure that everything is nicely fit and tight. Everybody is, is on the same page here. So we're talking specifically here um, with the congregation of Yasharal. But all those now still at the same time that are keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. But because the Father loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto our fathers. These fathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is very, very important. So when the father is talking about he's going to keep the covenant that he made, again, very important, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not talking about the covenant that he made with Moses. That was implemented, the animal sacrifices and things like that because of sin. So prior to that, there was a covenant. That covenant that the father made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the covenant that he's going to be reestablishing in his second coming. Very important. Then we have verse 9. Now, therefore, that Yahuwah, that Elohim, he is an Elohim that is faithful, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love them and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Um, I keep going to stay running with you. We're going to go to the book of, uh, you can stay in Deborah, and we're going to go this time to the 14th chapter. Verse 2. Verse 2. Absolutely. For you are set apart people unto Yahuwah, and Yahuwah has chosen you to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. So we see now all these nations that's upon the face of the earth, and we see there's about 70 nations. And out of those 70 nations, the Father chose the nation of Yashraal. Being that the Father chose us, we have a responsibility as a bride, as a bride to carry the name of the groom. Verse, let's go to Yermiyahu. All of these are self-explanatory, so there should be no problems. Only thing that we have to do is make sure that we live up to our um, end of the wedding contract. Because the Father is telling us that he is faithful and he is true, and he's going to uphold the commandments or the oath that he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we have to, as, as a bride, it's our, um, our, it's our job to make sure that we uphold our faithfulness to the groom, to the groom. Um, let's keep running at Jeremiah 31. Let's start at the first verse, 1 to 3. From 31, 1 to 3. At the same time, says you, will I be the Elohim of all the families of Yahshua? Right, that's very important. At that same time, so this time is talking about a particular time. Anybody know when this time is, is going to be? At that time. Because right now, there's not a regathering. We still scattered amongst the four corners of the earth. So we're talking about, according to now, the, um, the festivals of the Father of Yahuwah. Something has to happen prior to the <coughs> regathering. Northern kingdom, northern kingdom and southern kingdom shall be um, put together as one stick again. A a absolutely. Absolutely. So he's going to be the Elohim of all the families of the nation of Yasharal. Read on. And they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. Thus says Yahuwah, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Yahshua, when I went to cause him, rest, cause him to rest. Yahuwah appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, have I loved you with everlasting love? Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. Wow, that is, that is very um, deep, <laughs> heartfelt. So we should really begin to take these words very, very seriously when we begin to see how the Father chose a people and how he loves us with an everlasting love. Uh, let's go back to Deuteronomy and let's go with the 26th chapter. This is like a little bonus here. That's not there. So 20, Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, verse 19. Okay. Um, 
Let's start with 17 to 19, please. You have vouched uh, Yehuah this day to be your Elohim and to walk in his ways and to guard his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. And Yehuah hath vouched you this day to be his peculiar people as he promised you and that you should guard all his commandments. Let's stop right there. So what do you see what's happening in uh, verse 17 and 18? Anybody? That has a vouch. The key word there is a vouch. That has a vouch to Yahuwah this day to be thy Elohim and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. Then we have now, the Father has a vouch thee this day to be his peculiar people as he has promised thee and that thou shouldest keep his all his commandments. Verses 17 and 18, what do you now see? Like a spoken vow or a covenant. Right. It's a marriage. It's, it's, it's a marriage. Read on verse 19. And to make you high above all the nations which he has made you made in praise and in name and in honor, and that you may be a set of our people unto Yahuwah, and he has spoken. Hallelujah. I mean, this is getting so, so easy where um, it, sh it should be <laughs> about now almost second nature for us to understand how important it is for us to uphold these laws, statutes, and commandments, and all the things that the Father has done for us, we should always be appreciative of every single thing and not take anything for granted. Let's go to uh, the book of Shemot, or the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, verses uh, 5 and 6, please. Exodus, the 19th chapter, verses 5 through 6. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and guard my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. And that's very important. A kingdom, we should be unto the Father, a kingdom of priests. But the operative word in verse 5, can anybody see? What is the, the, the word that stands out the most in verse 5? The kingdom of okay. Keep my Right, the word if. So there's um, it's, it's, it's not like it's like an unconditional love. I mean, so we don't do the unconditional love. I mean, you can do whatever it is that you want to do, and the Father's going to still accept you. It doesn't work like that in Israel. So again, now, now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So again, in order for us now to become a peculiar treasure to the Father above all people, because all the earth is His, we must make sure that we abide by all the laws, statutes, and the commandments. Verse, and then it tells you in verse 6 that we're supposed to be now a kingdom of priests and a set apart nation. Uh -huh. Read on. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Yashorah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then one more. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 9. Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a set apart nation, and a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Hallelujah. So, Mr. Bacow, we're about to get into it now. We're going to talk about the faithful and true words of the Father of Yahuwah through his son, Yahusha HaMashiach. So we don't have a whole lot of um, chapters to go to, but the ones that we do have, they're, they're kind of lengthy. So we just want to slow it down here a little bit and prayfully that everybody would begin to understand how serious this walk is. It is very, very serious. It is so serious that it's not for the weak-hearted, but there's going to be a lot of things that's going to be happening around us. And we want everybody to be aware of what's going on. Um, it's about to really, really get uh, crazy because Saturday they're supposed to have um, a State of the Union address. Mm -hmm. But uh, Nancy Pelosi, now she wants to uh, cancel that because she said that they, uh, being that the government is on shutdown yep. and they won't have enough uh, personnel and security there, which is a bunch of crap. Whenever the, uh, the Congress, presidents, and any type of election, uh, election, electoral official um, is doing any type of office service, they automatically get um, services from 
security services. So this thing is going to be a long, drawn-out battle here. So we're going to go to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, the first chapter, and I'm going to read down here a little bit to verse 20. So just pay very close attention to what's going on. Now this is the revelation of Yahushua HaMashiach, which Elohim gave unto him to show unto his servants, which is very important. It's so important that the Father is sharing with Yahuganai to share what he's about to give John and to his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his messenger and to his servant John, who bear record of the word of Elohim and of the testimonies of Yahushua HaMashiach and all the things that he saw. Verse 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So what we should be seeing here now is that some people call it astral traveling. That's like a modern term for it now. But look how magnificent the Father is. He's actually able to take Yehukanon, who was on the island of Patmos, and do like a time travel all the way to present day today and see everything that's going on and he's telling him now write all these things down because all these things that I'm, about, I'm about to share with you are faithful and true and the time is at hand very important so again the power of the father he took john okay and took him thousands of years into the future and told him what was about to happen. So now we are witnessing all these things that are written that we're about to read here. And we're going to see something a little bit different here. But we're going to have scriptures here to, uh, to back everything up. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches in Asia. This is in Asia Minor here to these seven churches, grace or peace be unto you, from him which is, okay, which is present tense, and which was, which is past tense, and which is to come, which is future tense, and from the seven spirits, or ruachs, that are before his throne, and from Yahushua Mashiach, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, and to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. All right, so that's very, very important. Because John is about to be delivered a very serious uh, prophecy and message now to the servants of the Father of Yahuwah. And everybody knows who the servants are. We went through all these scriptures here, Deuteronomy 7 and 6 and 9. All these scriptures here to try to give us a foundation on how to actually look at what's going on in Revelation and in these last days here. And have made us kings and priests unto the Father, to Elohim and to his Father, to him be the esteem and dominion forever and ever. Hallelujah. Behold, he was the Mashiach, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. To support that, we're going to go to the book of Acts. Okay, because when we talk about here, these clouds here, we're not talking about these, these gas clouds that we see up in the heavens now. That's not what we're talking about. We're going to go to the book of Acts. Um, the first chapter in um, Zabud, if you can read verses 8 to 9 for me, please. <laughs> Acts, the first chapter, verses 8 through 9. But ye shall receive power after the set-apart spirit is come mm -hmm. upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto both to me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Right, so the uttermost parts of the earth is telling us now about a people that has been um, scattered. Um, Samaria is another name for, anybody know? Northern Kingdom. Hallelujah. Verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld 
he was taken up in a cloud and received him out of their sight. Um, read a little bit more, please. And while they locked steadf they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. One more verse. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Yahushua, which is uh, taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. All right, so how did the Mashiach uh, ascend into heaven? For Shammai? It said in a cloud, right? Cloud, right? In a cloud. So now when we go back to Revelation, um, the first chapter, verse seven. verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds. So the same way that he was taken up, he's coming back the same way. And again, um, I personally believe that these are vessels. Okay, not these clouds that we see that's floating up um, in the sky that lets us know whether or not it's going to be a, a, a rainy day or not. But anyway, behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, which is very important. So if those that pierced him is going to also see him, this lets us know that there is going to be a resurrection. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a resurrection here now. And all kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Hallelujah. Now, the Mashiach is saying that I am the Aleph and the Omega. These are the first and last letters of the Hebrew, I mean of the, of the Greek alphabet, the Alpha and the Omega. So in the Hebrew, the last letters, the first and the last letter is the Aleph. What's the first letter? In the top, we have, and we have, those are the first and last letters. So I am the beginning and the ending. So the strong leader leads you to the sign of the mark. And everybody should have that mark, and that mark is Torah. Okay? I am the Aleph and I am the Aleph and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith um, Yahuwah, or Yahusha Mashiach, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I Yahukanah, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. Very important. I Yahukanah, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, in the kingdom and patience of Yahusha Mashiach, was in the Isle that is called Patmos. For the word of Elohim and for the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. So very important that John now was on the island of Patmos because he's now a prisoner there. And he was a prisoner there because he upheld the testimony of the father um, of Yahuwah. Now, verse 10. I was in the Ruach on the Father's day and heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet. Anybody know what day this is? Shabbat. Right, okay, so... I was in the, um, in the Ruach on the Father's Day, but something more stands out here, giving us um, exactly what day this actually is. Right, exactly. So we talked about the future trumpets here. I was in the Spirit on the uh, Ruach on the Father's Day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in the book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatria, uh, and unto Sardis, and Philadelphia, and unto uh, Lacedosia. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So these seven golden candlesticks is what we have right here. This is just an example. Okay, but they, they, it was a menorah, is what they saw. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, so in the midst here of the candlestick here, of this, um, the candlesticks, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt with the paps of a golden girdle. His head and his hairs was white like wool, Daniel 7 and 9, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And, um, we don't believe that old school teaching. The reason why his eyes was a flame of fire is because he, you know, he's, he, yeah, he's like he was an alcoholic. He drank a lot. That's not now. That's not what we're talking about. Here, all right. You talk about the anger and the fury of the Father sending his Son now to redeem the nation of Yahshua. 
nothing to do. He was a wine bibbler. We're not, we not running with that here. And his feet likened to fine brass as they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. And have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, of the messengers of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which I saw are the seven churches. Now, we're going to get in, I'm just going to touch on it today. Every single congregation that's out here that is uh, that's awakening, they all fall under the characteristics of one of these seven churches. Every single congregation that's out there fall under one of these categories. And, um, and I'll leave it there for now because there's a whole lot more to that. All right? Let's go to 2 Ezra. All right? We're going to talk about this here a little bit. 2 Ezra. Um, the 15th chapter. All right? Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. What's about to happen now is, 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 a, is a warning or a wake-up call for the nation of Yashra'al. This is Ezra's now. He's also speaking with the messenger. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, the same words of prophecy now that we read back in Revelation, the first chapter.